Hey, hello everyone and welcome to Extreme Graphics Tech. My name is Angelo and I have to start saying that my channel is already like a one year old. I haven't made too many videos in here because I am just making specific videos for this channel. I have a Spanish channel that has a lot more videos about more things, but that's not what I want to, this channel to be about. However, even though I've been eight years in my Spanish channel and I have covered lots of GPU, I realized that I have never really made a, you know, a dedicated video to one of the most legendary GPUs ever created, the GTX 1060 six gigabytes. And let me talk to you a little bit about why this car is so amazing and so legendary. To begin with, we have to start with the previous series, the 900 series, which was a beloved series, and one of my most uh, um, precious car was the 970. I went for a four, I went from a 460 to a 970. So I had only one gigabyte of VRAM, and I went to four gigabytes of VRAM. So, and that car was a beast at the time, and I thought I made a huge jump because I went, you know, for the 460 to the 960 and it was only $330 and I was over the moon. However, on July of 2016, the GTX and the 1060 was released and all May was it a jump. So to begin with, it had 50% more VRAM than the highest uh, level that I had, that was the 970. They didn't just match the 970 in terms of VRAM, they surpassed by 50%, even though it, this car is a tier lower. So that's, I think, one of the reasons NVIDIA has realized that, that they made a mistake with the GTX 10 series, because I think this has been one of the best um, jump in history, in terms of quality, price, and performance. So they not only gave 50% more VRAM to the GTX 1060, it behaved close or sometimes even better than a 980 and it costed $30 less than the 970 because this car came with an MSRP of $299 and that was July of 2016. And so at the time, to be honest, it was just amazing. To think that the 1070 had 8 gigabytes of VRAM doubling the previous generation. And when you think about it, now we have a 4060 that is like four generations after with the same amount of VRAM than the 1080 and just two gigabytes of VRAM more than the 1060. And I think this car has been so Long, the longevity of this car has been so great that this is the reason NVIDIA has been doing this tricky things with memory and so on because they don't want anyone to stay for so long in this. Let's not talk about the 1080 Ti. Fortunately, I don't have one, but that's another legendary car. However, for my money, this is the most legendary car uh, of, that NVIDIA has produced, even more than the 8800. Now, um, let's... Since I have never made a dedicated video for this GPU, I thought, why I have never made a, a, a video for the 1060? I think it deserved one. So what a better time to test it than in 2024. So let's check the benchmark and I'll come back with my conclusions. And as usual, I'm going to start with Dying Light 2. And in this game, we can use the GTX 1066GB to play a 1080p with FSR quality and media preset, and we are going to be well above 60 FPS. Of course, I can't prove that it's going to always be like that, but I think that, you know, the general consensus should be that the game is playable at around 60 FPS. With this configuration, no problem whatsoever. But yeah, there could be moments where it goes down. However, I think this is a very good result to start with. This is a game that looks phenomenal. And even in this configuration, I think this is having a really good quality and you're going to enjoy this game with a GTX 1060, no problems whatsoever. 
when it comes to Hogwarts Legacy, one of the most popular game of last year apparently, well, you can also enjoy a 60 FPS experience using this car at 1080p with FSR quality and again medium preset. We have to remember that medium preset is not like bad quality, games look so good these days that even a medium quality you are going to have a beautiful and amazing experience. Yes, it's not perfect, but at the same as you can go low as 50, you can go as high as a 100 in some areas. So yeah, there are some areas that are going to be lower, some areas that are going to be higher, but I think in, you know, in general, you're going to have a very nice 60 FA experience. Not bad for an eight year old GPU still fighting to this day. So very good. Now on The Last of Us Part 1, we know it's not the best. Uh, optimized game and as even then we can sort of get to 60 yes there are points where it will go down as 50 but still look we are playing here with the fsr and balance 1080p auto preset you know and still looking quite good the worst case is the the texture because there is not enough um vram however the textures now look much better than they looked at the launch day so it shouldn't be a detriment to the game i think it's still a very well made game that is worth your time to play and on the 1060 you can actually play at a very good quality and yeah you can limit to 30 if you want to get even more you know uh, quality out of the game now a starfield is a different conversation it's a more heavy game and here we see that we are around 30 to 40 FPS depending on the situation we are already using the low preset and FSR at the 75% so you can lower a little bit but I was never actually able to get 60 uh, stable FPS and remember this is the worst case scenario it means that when you go inside some areas you're going to get um, around 60 FPS anyway so it will depend on your tolerance and on what you want to do but I think this is a good compromise to enjoy the game um, because of the nature of it it's not like you actually need 60 the fact that you can play this game that gave just last year with an 8 year old GPU is still fantastic. And this is more clear when we play Avatar, a game that came at the end of 2023 and it looks phenomenal. And in here you can, we can play a 1080p FSR quality, a medium preset, but we have to limit at around 30 FPS. If you want to play a 60, honestly, you have to sacrifice so much image quality that I don't think is worth it. But if you have like a 40 FPS VRR monitor, then you can just limit to 40 and enjoy, you know, a middle ground where you're going to have... Uh, better performance and better image quality so yeah you, you can play with that depending on the hardware you have however I still think that we are playing one of the latest and most beautiful game on a GTX 1060 and an amazing quality and performance so yeah for me honestly this is a win now this is a 2024 game and if we are in 2024 asking this question we need to test at least one game from 2024 and in this case is Tekken 8 which I think is the more beautiful game released this year so far and it looks and runs very good on this GTX 1060 and I'm also using the TSR 80% scale system that is implemented for the first time in this game as far as I know and as you can see on three different locations and play, mm, we are getting those 60 SPS that yes, there is um, you know one frame here and there that you can lose, but I, I don't think you will realize if we didn't have the counter there. So this is, for me, another win for the GTX 1060. Now, A Plague Tale Requiem is an interesting case. When this game came out, it was basically impossible to get 60 FPS with the 1060. But nowadays, look at those frames, guys. We can play at more than 60 FPS even in this area with using resolution optimizer balance and the low preset. This game has clearly come a long way since launch. And here in this area with lots of vegetation that I tested, still we can get around 50 to 65, 55 to 65. So I still think this is a very good performance considering the age of the car and how good this game looks so yeah i will say that this is a game that i will play like this any day of the week so gtx 1060 keeps the legendary alive and well as legendary as it can be the, not everything can be perfect and um, this is one of the worst optimized game of last year and it's jedi 
Jedi Survivor that is still a mess. However, if you limit the frame rate to 30, you can enjoy a very good quality and gameplay since the game is going to be very stable. As you can hear, see here, I don't have it limited, but if you limit it, it will be very, very stable. This is 1080p FSR quality with medium presets, and I think the game, it looks phenomenal. I love how the game looks. It's just the performance and um, optimization that is very bad, but the game is very good. I finished it even on a 1490 at 30 FPS to have perfect and consistent frame rate. So yeah, there, you're not going to die by playing at 30 FPS, man. Now, this is something different I normally don't do, but I wanted to test it with the GTX 1060, and this is me testing the RPSS3 emulator and with the game Pacific Motor Storm at 1440p, and this game is limited at 30 FPS on the PlayStation 3, but we are playing at 60 here at 1440p. Remember, this game runs 3720 on the PlayStation 3. Amazing performance, guys. But I'm testing another game from the uh, PlayStation 3 era, in this case, God of War, Three, this game is also limited to 30 FPS and 720p on the PlayStation 3. And here we're playing at 1080p with the frame rate on lock. And yeah, we never get to those 60 stable FPS. But as you can see, the GPU is not being fully uh, uh, utilized. So that means that the problem here is more about the emulator. So, But this is still, for me, a very good uh, result. Now, using another emulator, please Nintendo don't sue me. This is the Yuzu running the uh, Link's Awakening game. Um, yeah, other than some and you know shader compilation issues, the game run at 60 FPS at a very good quality. We're using 1x resolution because going above will make the uh, game deep. So I think this is a quite a good result and a clean uh, image that we're getting from this game. Of course, on other games you're going to be able to go higher, like 1.5x resolution, because it will depend how well the game runs, how much power it needs, and how well optimized the emulator is. But as you can see here, the GTX 1060 is doing phenomenal with the Switch games and it's obviously going to do much better with lower system like the Dreamcast or GameCube on Dolphin and so on. So yes, another piece of GTX 1060. So if you have seen, I've tried to cover a lot of games. Obviously, if I'm testing the card at 2024, it makes no sense to test very, very old games. I tried to cover from a lot of periods and even emulation. And oh my, I have to say I am I am not going to say super surprised because I always use this card to test games when they come out. But by testing everything and trying to push for a more frame rate, I was really surprised to see what we could achieve. Yes, it's true, showing its age, you cannot have on all games 60F perfect FPS. Some games you may want to limit yourself to 30 FPS, and some games won't even run like Alan Wake 2, which I tried, but there was no way to even get 30 F close to 30 FPS on that title. So, yes, there is one game that we cannot play, but out of the rest of the games, there is not a single game that we couldn't play in some form, in some playable for not like 20 fps so even taking 8 a 2024 game is playing at 60 fps with this gpu and i know it's not the more demanding the most demanding game out there but the fact is that you can still play 2024 games with this gpu no problems and you can play even games like avatar which are very heavy and graphic and you still have a very good experience and I always said, if you have like a VRR monitor or a monitor that accepts a refresh rates of 40 or 50 or any other that is not 60, you can have the best of both worlds. So if you don't like 30 FPS, you can still lock the game to 40 and have, you know, a slightly adjusted uh, performance and graphical quality to up from 30 to 40. So you get in the middle, you have a more performance, which is more, it feels a lot more smooth than 30, and you can have a better visual quality. And yes, you have to use FSR a lot if you want to be close to 1080p. But even in those situations, I think this car is still doing a very good job, all things considered today. And you can get it on the used market for around 50 to 100 dollars. And that's, I think, the reason why this car has you know, stay on the Steam survey so high for so long. To begin with, this car was the king for so long. It was on the top for many, many years. But even today, in 2024, it's still in the fourth 
part of the Steam Survey hardware, which means this car is still super popular. And that's one of the reasons I think that Nvidia has, you know, become worried because it wasn't until the 3060 that essentially this car was dethroned. So it took uh, Nvidia like two or three generations before people move away from the, the GTX 10 series. And honestly, I can see why. This is a card that as we tested, you can play emulation, PlayStation 3, Nintendo Switch, which are mo two of the most um, heavy emulators, and you can still have better resolution than on the original consoles. You can play all the games, and you know, for 50 to $100, it's not a bad investment. Obviously, I won't recommend you to go as your first option for purchase, but depending in your, your region, you know, prices maybe go crazy, and you just want to play some games or, you know, have some form of fun with games and this car will provide that. Also, it's still fully supported by Nvidia, which is one of the things that I like, that is not like the RX 580 from AMD that already dropped support from drivers only for security is going to be supported. This car, at least today, is still supported by Nvidia, which is quite good from my point of view. And so for 50 or $100, even for a second system, maybe you are, you know, between 50 and $100, you can get it on a new system or for an emulation system or to have like a secondary system that you use for, you know, casual gaming or maybe in the living room and things like that. It doesn't use too much energy and it's honestly one of my, pref uh, my favorite cars in history. So I will call, the, uh, for me, this is a legendary GPU that is going to go down and remember it very uh, fun. Uh, uh, it's going to be remembered very well. So yeah, there you go. The GTX 1060, one of the most legendary cars ever made. And see you on the next video.